In this video, I'm going to show you four different types of portrait lighting that you should familiarize yourself with, as well as two different styles of lighting that can be combined with the four patterns in order to create a variety of portraits in different situations. I really want to emphasize how valuable this information is. This is one of the foundational lessons in photography that will change the way you shoot portraits. I'm going to be using a softbox with a modeling light to show you what the different types of lighting look like, but once you've trained yourself to recognize them, you'll see them everywhere you go and you'll be able to recognize unflattering or bad lighting in natural or ambient light as well. The four different types of portrait lighting are split lighting, loop lighting, Rembrandt lighting, and butterfly lighting. Before we move on, remember that as a rule of thumb, a properly lit portrait is one that has good catch lights on the upper third of the subject's eyes. So I'm gonna keep that in mind as I move the light around Toby. Now let's get started. A split lighting pattern means that half of your subject's face will be in shadow and half of it will be lit. To create this look, I'm gonna move the light right next to Toby and place it to his right at his eye level. This type of lighting is moody and dramatic, so you should give it a try if that's the type of look you want to create. The next type of portrait lighting is called loop lighting. This type of lighting pattern is characterized by a small loop-shaped shadow cast by the subject's nose. To create this look, you want to raise your light above your subject's eye level and at about 45 degrees to the left or right of the camera. You'll also want to angle it down and aim it towards the cheek that's furthest away from the light. This is by far the most common and versatile type of portrait lighting. You'll see it used a lot in family, wedding, and lifestyle photography. Next we have Rembrandt lighting. This type of light is characterized by the small triangle of light on your subject's cheek that's furthest from the light source. This type of pattern is similar to loop lighting, so to create it, I'm just going to move the light further to the right until I see the shadows on Toby's face lengthen in that distinct triangle shape on his cheek. Rembrandt light is not as commonly used as loop lighting because it's just a little bit more dramatic, but it's still a pretty versatile type of lighting pattern. Next we have butterfly lighting. This type of lighting pattern is characterized by a distinct shadow directly underneath the nose that resembles a butterfly. It's often used in glamour or beauty photography in combination with a reflector and other light modifiers. It's helpful for when you want to accent your subject's cheekbones and chin. To create this type of pattern, I'm going to move the light source above the camera and in front of Toby, aim down at a 45 degree angle towards his face. You'll have to be careful not to place the light directly above your subject, which can cause deep shadows under the eyes that are not desirable. Now you may have noticed that all of the previous lighting patterns we've discussed had Toby looking straight towards the camera. And the only thing that changed was the position of the light source. Now we're gonna do a combination of moving the light and having Toby look in slightly different directions in order to illustrate the effects of broad and short lighting. So while Toby is still looking towards the camera, I'm going to move the light 45 degrees to camera left to create a loop lighting effect. Now if we have Toby turn slightly away from the camera and towards the light, we're gonna be lighting the short side of his face. This is what we call short lighting, and it helps to make the face appear more elongated and narrow. Now without moving the light or camera, I'm going to have Toby face in the opposite direction that he's currently facing, away from the light. When he faces away from the light, we're illuminating the broad side of his face. This is what we call broad lighting, and it helps to make the face appear shorter and wider. And that's it. If you study and memorize these lighting styles and patterns, I guarantee that you'll be able to find good light just about anywhere you go and create amazing portraits. If you found this video to be helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll be back soon with another video where we'll show you how to create some of these sliding patterns using window light.